This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comet, it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nitch. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just two of signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Well, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight on Vast Wasteland, yes, it's uh, Norman Lear, and we just couldn't be more pleased and proud. But, uh, well, maybe more, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but, uh, well, let's see, we've got, well, we've got a helicopter it's looking over us. <laughs> Come on! But anyways, oh, anyways, here on Vast Wasteland, we're going to have, um, uh, it's our third big season we're going into now, and uh, what uh, I think uh, I think we figured it out actually 20 episodes. This is the 20th episode of Ass Wasteland. Hard to believe we've What's gotten this far. Thing? I know. Well, maybe that's for the 25th episode. Oh. <laughs> Coming later this season. Anyways, uh, before we jump in, I just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at uh, 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. And if you want to write into us, just write into <laughs> Box 151526. Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And now, on to Norman Lear, certainly one of the uh, giants of 70s television. Uh, pretty much pretty much kept uh, CBS afloat there for a while. <laughs> pretty much single-handedly, but uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you got to start off with uh, tonight, Wilbur? Oh, no, you don't. Don't you over <laughs> me, boy. I'm still looking stuff up. <laughs> Well, that all start. <laughs> well, Norman Lear, of course, was uh, doing a lot of uh, work in the 60s in films. 
And he was getting kind of tired of all the stuff where he was, uh, he wanted something topical and something that. Uh, Ooh, that so, would it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> something, something topical that he could actually uh, see something in the in the newspapers and like weeks later have it on TV. Uh, and he just can't do that in a movie, obviously. So uh, he had a actually another big reason. He had a string of uh, movies that made no money. So he Good said, maybe I'll movie business. Maybe I'll go do a TV show. And he was looking at a uh, at a uh, British show called. Till death do us part, um, and he said this would be a great idea for an American TV show, except for the fact that it was very controversial, and and of course everything on then was like you know uh, get smart and uh, and uh, girl from Uncle and uh, Mr. Ed that kind of stuff and Beverly Hillbillies. So uh, if not for the fact that uh, CBS had to pretty well uh, empty out its schedule of all of its. Uh, uh, rural programming there in the late 60s. Rural. rural. Is that when Gunsmoke died? No, not, no, not Gunsmoke that, went on for a while. Kept going. Uh, oh, but oh, Beverly yeah. Hillbillies and and uh, Green Acres and Petticoat Junction and Hee Haw, they all all got pretty much dropped off the schedule because a lot of people watched them, but it was the people who weren't spending any money. So the uh, ad advertisers said, "Boom, get them out of here." Sitting home watching TV. We ain't got to right. spend no money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So they uh, they accepted this uh, strange show, which of course was uh, at the last second called All in the Family, and like uh, all, uh, it seems like all great uh, television shows and movies, this series never just barely got on the air because there was like two pilots on ABC, mm -hmm. and ABC was like, well we're third place, but we're not that desperate, <laughs> so they didn't catch it. And a young Fred Silverman said over at CBS, "Hey, we like that show, so we're going to put it on." Yeah, put on and it just spawned more and more. Yes, <laughs> it certainly did. Um, but didn't didn't you know everybody on All in the Family? Wasn't there? Didn't everyone have an Archie in their family? Oh yeah, and a Mike, mm -hmm. and a Gloria, and an Edith, and I think that's the appeal. Right. The fact that everybody on the show. With someone in your family. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't just live with that person, you know, you knew him anyway. You, you no, knew somebody like that. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? I mean, that wasn't a George Jefferson in your family, huh? Not that I knew of. I never watched that show either. <laughs> so, um. Disgusting. This, this <laughs> show was certainly a groundbreaker in the fact that uh, I think not only. Uh, the the thing that everybody focused on was like ooh bad language and and relevance and all this but the other thing was the fact that uh, it was like you were saying it was it was a realistic family more than I anything I remember the language being so bad for for 70s television was yeah, horrible it was, it was pretty they bad said, buddy they said damn <gasps> ooh, oh i heard damn. worse around the house well, <laughs> well maybe not around the house but but for television, that was, um, that was especially then, it was uh, just unheard of. And almost, almost like on the episode of Star Trek when they were in the, uh, you know, the city on the edge of forever there. Mm -hmm. They leave and Kirk says, ooh, let's get the hell out of here. <gasps> ooh, ooh, can't say that. that. Ooh. Well, he did. And they showed bathrooms on the family, too. That's right. Toilets. And, and showed couples actually in, in the same bed together sleeping. Or not sleeping. Not sleeping. <laughs> as the case may be. always mostly the same couple. <laughs> right, well. <laughs> So uh, it really was a groundbreaking show, and of course it just spawned uh, just well, a, uh, a, a road, a plethora, a plethora. plethora. Thank you. It um, begat. Let's see, the Maud. Jeffersons, Maud. Well, yeah, Maud. That was Maud the first one. Maud begat Good Times. Right. Um, good okay, and then also, Florida. well, let's see. From all in the family directly, we, let's see. Jeffersons. Jeffersons. And then, and then. Archie Bunker's play. Right. There was Gloria. Gloria, but off of the Jeffersons, there was the. There was a very short show called Checking che In. Yeah, Checking with, In. With uh, Marla Gibbs as, um, who's the housekeeper? Uh, What's her name? Uh, well, we don't know. Until it was like, I yeah, know. It was, it was not the <laughs> Well, Florence. anyway, it was kind of like I Florence. Didn't watch it the was show. Florence. It was like the Marla Gibbs show, basically. Oh, yes. yeah, I didn't watch that. And they moved on to that, and that was so. Uh, <laughs> well, I just wanted to hit George Jefferson. I, I, I think so. He was just did. so angry all the time. He just <laughs> angry all I was like, have a heart attack because you're so angry. <laughs> <laughs> and why she put up with him? No, I would have hit him. She had him. She had him outweighed. No, come on. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Take George him out. That. No problem. <laughs> no problem. But you had um, had the first spinoff mod uh, from '72 to '78. I like mod. And uh, of course, uh, started on uh, 
an episode where the uh, all the bunkers are sick, and so Maude has to come in to take care of them because uh, Edith's trying to take care of them and she's sick and this isn't working out. And so this enormous uh, verbal battle goes on between Archie and Maude. Well, and, uh, and Archie Maud. the ultra-conservative and Maude the, the ultra-liberal. Ultra so it was like... Those two people on 60 Minutes that used to call each other names all the time. And mm -hmm. Sheena Alexander and, and what's his name? Because no one ever listened to what he said anyway. Right. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, this, is, this is a really tenuous spinoff, but uh, off of, uh, also off of Mod, there was a show called Hanging In. And this was another, uh, another Norman Lear show. This was kind of interesting. It starred uh, Bill Macy, of course, Mod's husband on the show, who didn't play... This is the same character, but in the original version, this is really strange. There was an original version where they decided that uh, Maude was going to replace a congressman who had just recently died. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to move the show to Washington. They did this for two episodes on Maude, and they were going to rename the show, what, whatever they were going to rename it. Uh, and after two episodes, B. Arthur said, no, nah, I don't want to do this, and left. And that was the end of Maude. And so they said, we really like this idea, though, about this congressman, so we're going to have a show with, uh, I mean, it goes on, there's like four different versions of this show. Uh, there's, there's a version where it, what it eventually ends up, this hanging in show, is actually a, um, uh, Bill Macy is running uh, a university. I mean, <laughs> it's really strange. There's like four different versions of the show. They did, one version had John Amos in it, and okay. which was Later a pilot, pop up on Good Times. Good Times. And that never went anywhere. There was another version of the show with Cleavon Little, and that never got on the air. Okay. And that was pulled at the last second. And finally, this Bill Macy version, this show, and this is the amazing thing, this show had virtually the same script for the pilot, of all four of these pilots, virtually the same cast except for the, the lead character. The final version of it that took like three years to get on the air was on for five weeks and was canceled. <laughs> so... <laughs> I heard interesting stories about Bill Macy when that show was on. I heard he was in the original Old Calcutta. I think he was. I think you're right. And he didn't think anything of, uh, say he had to do a scene in a towel. Mm -hmm. He didn't think anything of dropping that towel and showing the audience that right. there wasn't anything there. <laughs> well... My. A real stage actor. There you go. There you go. A real but Robin I like, Williams. Yeah. <laughs> but I like Maude a lot. I even had my mom make me long... You remember how Maude used to wear the long vest? Yes. That was just so cool. I had my mom make me long vest because Ooh. those were so cool to wear to junior high. There you go. They were just cool. So, let's see it then. It was Maude. Okay, hey. who played the first... Okay, Adrian Barbeau was probably best known as Carol. Yes. But she wasn't the original Carol. No, you're Maud. right. You're right. But I can't remember, and I see the actress. In, in the pilot, the thing. in the in the pilot that was an episode of All in the Family. Uh, let's see if I can find this here. Oh, do 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 do. Oh, they don't listen in here. Darn these people. Anyways, there was another actress. <laughs> <laughs> and she pops up on TV all the time. All over the place. And, and that guy, that um, Conrad, Conrad Bain. Bain played the, the rather somewhat drunken doctor. <laughs> yes. I mean, he was always had a drink in his hand. What's his name? Arthur? Arthur. And boy, did he go down. <laughs> yeah, well. And Rue McClanahan was mm -hmm. his wife. Right. So there was a lot of people on that. Mm. Oh, darn it. It doesn't say anywhere in here. Well, anyways. Um... I'll, I'll come to back, uh, it'll find it us, eventually. It'll hit us in the middle of the night. We'll wake up screaming that woman's name. <laughs> well, I won't, but... Well, if any who knows? you guys do, we'll... Okay. So, Next let's day. see. So, <laughs> then, of course, Maude begat good times. Good times. And With good times J.J. Dynamite Walker. <laughs> yeah. And he's still ugly. <laughs> well. Of course, we all ran around saying Dynamite then. Yes, It had that influence once. on us. At least once. That show went through a lot of uh, changes. Changes because it's like they were all together, and you got this real sense of family unity. Then Dad goes off to Alaska to work the pipeline, and then Mom gets disappears. Killed. Yeah. Dad yeah. gets killed. And then Mom disappears. And then Mom disappeared. <laughs> and then and Selma got married. Yes. To a football player that tore his leg up. Yes. And Janet Jackson got on the show. Yeah. <laughs> An early appearance by Janet Jackson. Yeah, it was like one of the. Her, wasn't she? No, no. No, I she think was so. a she was the adopted daughter of 
Winona, the woman across the hall. Oh, no, not Winona. another Dodie. Name. <laughs> <laughs> adopted kid. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she was like the adopted child of Winona across the hall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, she wasn't always there. I didn't like, watch the show. It's like she took her. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's against this whole concept for some reason. <laughs> I just, I, go ahead. Anyways, uh, by the way, we did, uh, did just find Marsha Rod played the uh, oh, yeah, original part of Carol of in the uh, in the pilot for. Uh, yeah, there's a name you don't hear often. <laughs> Watch your ride. Went on to I've fame and fortune. And other I think on like a couple episodes of Bob Newhart show or something. Something. I mean, I've I, seen something her like face. that. Yeah. Pops up Commercial. now. Commercials. Yeah. Commercials. That's possible. One of those things that Burgess Meredith narrates. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Burgess Meredith, and certainly not getting into the last last episode's fiasco. <laughs> exactly. But. Uh, can mention Gloria because Burgess Meredith was on Gloria. I'd forgotten and all about that. Forgot the reference that. He was but the that veterinarian. Techni technically, was an '80s show, so it didn't count. Yes, so. that's true. It but was, uh, was a... that was like the last gasping breath of the whole uh, of the whole uh, continuity, pretty well, much. Didn't Archie's place kind of hang on there? Well, after I, Gloria. I, I hate to even count Archie's place because by that point the show had just, you just lost. Dead and everything. Everybody was gone except him and the little kid. And it was like so nice and maudlin, and and it just had lost pretty much all of its edge. Yeah, lost yeah. its oomph. And it yeah, was just old guys sitting around a bar getting drunk. Yeah. Oh, gee. And then Art Cheers around. came along. No. <laughs> mm. Young guys sitting around the bar, bar getting, getting drunk. drunk. Yeah. Where everybody is your friend. <laughs> anyway. They'll buy you drinks and everything. No. <laughs> well, there's oh, other. Of course, well, uh, I don't watch that show either. <laughs> other, other than the whole uh, Archie Bunker universe, there was a lot of, a lot of other shows that uh, got into. Of course, probably the, I suppose the other, the other big one had to have been, uh, well, Sanford and Son is is kind of a, I, I consider it kind of an iffy one because yeah. Norman Lear wasn't really involved in it. He was kind of an executive producer, but I, you get the feeling that he was really well, never involved in it that well, much. Well, it wasn't Sanford and Son based on Steptoe and Son, which was British another British comedy. show. Yes. Yeah, British comedy. Yeah, but Bud, that was Bud Yorkin, really. Uh, so that's so there's that show, and then of course there's Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh, wait, we forgot <laughs> AKA Pablo. Well, well, it was AKA Pablo. Well, I'm, I'm doing the big shows first oh, okay. before you go to the little ones. I see. All right. Go right ahead. M H two. Yeah, don't mind me. Yes. M H two. Well, the M H squared. M H squared. M -H squared. <laughs> so. Um, Mary, that was a big favorite. Mary. We had that at where I lived. We got it out of Dayton mm -hmm. on Channel 7, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, for a very long time. And people fussed about it, and people complained about it, and, oh, this is such a horrible show, that all the kids are coming home from high school watching this show. Yeah, we were. And then just for no apparent reason, like overnight, you woke up, and it wasn't on, and Channel 19 had picked it up and was running it at like 11. Yeah, that's, what, that's when... Station. Well, that's I think Dayton ran it at 11.30 for a while. And then it was just like, boom, to Channel 19. <laughs> it, most markets showed it late at night because of everyone said, ooh, it's such a radical we show. We for a long well, time, although three. It, it, it started off in the afternoons, though, because they thought yeah. it was just pretty much a soap opera. And it was just right on there know, after all the other My mom flipped it on thinking it was a show. It was soap. already on late night. I Is that know. right? Yeah. Really? Well, in yep. Columbus here, it was, on at, um, it was on in the afternoons also for quite a while. And people, um, it was like, people, some people watched it. And other people, you know, they just passed it by. They thought it was another soap opera. Mm -hmm. Until people started talking about it. Yes. Then they went to turn it on and found out what it was about. And then, whoop, it's on after Fritz the Night Owl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on just before Fritz. Yeah. But I, I, I think 11 was about the latest it went on down where I live. Yeah, it was, it was on it. Um, it. You'd get the 11 o'clock news, then 11.30. Uh, well, the Mary Hartman it music would yeah. come on. And Louise La... Laughter. Laughter. <laughs> dry in the teeth. <laughs> Too much cocaine. No, I think yeah. so. But there were a lot of neat people on that show. But there were a lot of neat people on that Grandpa show. Grandpa Larkin. One <laughs> the of my Bird favorite. Wood Slasher. <laughs> yeah, what a guy. Victor, what was his name? Victor Killian or something Killian? like that. Killian? Yeah. And Dodie Goodman. Ah, oh, yep. Dodie Goodman. You, you just don't see enough Dodie Goodman. Do you? you don't. You know. She's, She's still funny. popping up on show every time you turn. Here's That's that. right. And Deborah Lee Scott. All these right. raisins, yeah. Deborah Lee Scott was was Kathy, the slutty sister. Mm. Well, well loose, 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 loose. That's right. This was before you were allowed to say slut on TV. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I hope we still can. But yeah, um, we say it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we we 
Mm. First time for us. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So, um, let's see, we had uh, Tom Poston was on that, wasn't he? Tom Poston? Was he? No, I think they're no. thinking of Tom or Husband. <laughs> Tom or Husband was on there. Who was his name? Greg Malavy. Greg Malavy. Actually, Greg this, this is the show I didn't funny. watch that much. Oh, okay. Oh, now, As I watched Mary Hartman all the, all the, the time. whole uh, Archie Bunker universe, which you didn't watch. Okay, <laughs> all right. And, of course, Mary Hartman. Let's see, who else was on there? Jimmy Joe Jeters. Yeah, Jimmy Joe Jeter. His little TV evangelist that got fried in the bathtub. Yeah, because his dad just knocked Who that. was? Who was? Dabney Coleman. Yep. Good old Dabney Coleman. He he pops up every day yeah. all the time, but and, you uh, just can't see it up there. <laughs> Mary Kay Place, right. not only did Mary Hartman, but she also wrote some of MASH, and she was on an episode of MASH. Mm -hmm. but she also wrote for that show, yep. and her husband was, uh, I just forgot his name, Graham Jarvis? Yeah. Graham Jarvis. Charlie. Charlie, boy. And, um... Who played Jimmy Joe, though? I'm trying to think. It was that little kid. I want to say Sparky Marcus. Oh, that was his but name. But I'm not sure. No, it wasn't his name. Um, little big-eyed kid. I know what you mean. He's this little kid. Little. Well, he, kid. He, he was... Jimmy Joe Jeter? Yeah. Jimmy Joe... Sparky Marcus. Sparky Marcus. Okay, see? well, there I we are. I did watch the show. <laughs> well, that's just a name that didn't settle with me. I, I don't know. I didn't watch the credits. <laughs> but I think probably the person that got their biggest start off of that show was, like, one of my favorite comedians. I actually bought his record because I saw him on the show, Martin Mull. There it is, yes. Who, who was killed on the show. As, um, he was killed as Gar Garth, Garth Gimble. Gimble. And his twin brother, Barth, Barth came a, back. Yes. Because or was it Barth and then Garth? It's Barth and then Garth. Whichever. No, Bar Barth is the one on the, on the talk show. Is it? No, Let's Garth. Check. That's Garth. That's Let's check there. and make sure well, here. Anyway, it was so cool tonight. because... He was like this abusive husband, and he like beat his wife up, and he got, he got into, he, she shoved him in the closet and slammed no the door, part. and the Christmas tree stabbed him in the back. Mm -hmm. But I see people like Martin Mull so much that they wrote in and said, we want to see this guy some more. So they created, like, the evil twin was dead, so they brought in the, the nice. not, not as evil twin. <laughs> not, not quite as evil. Well... The other one wasn't much better. <laughs> well, he's, this, this one's more sarcastic. The other one was just downright mean. He wasn't just downright mean. He was twisted mean, funny. Well, I mean, but he was mean, though. But then he went on to Darn do Fernwood mean. Tonight, which right. was just absolutely hilarious, which I still watch. It's, it's just... Of course, now on Nick at Night. I think so. I probably liked it a lot because Fernwood was rumored to be Norwood, and I didn't live far from Norwood. Ah. <laughs> and you could draw the uh, lines real close there. Mm -hmm. Of course, that went on, uh, switched its name to America tonight when they moved to, what was it, Coma? Coma, yeah. yeah. The unfinished furniture capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> they went from Fernwood to Altacoma. Fernwood, <laughs> Norwood. And, uh... Hey, well, come back and you can stay longer. <laughs> this is great. Well, you could buy this if you Who pay for Dennis it. Who played Dennis on Mary Hartman? <laughs> Dennis was... Because we um, see his face all oh, the time. Oh, well, wait a minute. Okay. Because it was so sad. If you never saw, like, the beginning and end of Mary Hartman, it, it started out, she was scrubbing the floor trying to get the yellow wax off of it, and it ended the same way. <laughs> she was, like, scrubbing the floor. Tom comes in, pulls a beer, pops it. And it ended the same way, except it was no longer Tom. It was Dennis. I want to say his last name was Dennis Foley was the well, character. Well, Dennis Foley, he was Sergeant Dennis Foley. He started yeah. off Bruce Solomon. Bruce Solomon, yeah. Dennis. And you don't see enough of Bruce Solomon anymore. <laughs> there was another character that you see all the time now. I best remember this guy because he was a comedian. He used to do a character called Dougie Duck. Okay. And he was on, he was on Mary Hartman, too. It was like one of the first places I ever saw him. Well, okay. Um, but I can't remember his name except that I remember he used to do this little character called Dougie Duck. He put a little baseball hat, but he didn't do that on Mary Hartman. Ah, uh, it'd be kind of hard to find. He just stayed it. up late and watched TV. <laughs> yeah, darn the luck, darn the luck. Well, let's see, Martin Mull, now back to him. I um, had been hearing that a lot of his comedy stuff they'd played on the radio, and that was before the Mary Hartman thing, before he was on there, really. And uh, then, by golly, there he was on there, and he got, finally got to put a face with the uh, the voice, and he didn't look a he, thing like he, what he sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> No, He's just thing. gone on to do more well, and more and that. movies and yeah, the history of white people in America. He's just <laughs> gone on and on. In fact, he's probably the most prolific person from the show to go on to other things. I know. You still see Louise Lasser. Maybe now. Well, but she's, ooh, she's <laughs> a rotundo now. But she's put on a lot of weight. She doesn't she's do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's because she's 
got food now or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of the other shows that didn't quite do as well in the Norman Lear area. You just you mentioned one earlier. A.K.A. Hey, hey, Pablo. Pablo. This, at least it, what an enormous cast the show had. This is yeah. stunning. I mean, what is it, about uh, 15 people there, it looks like. Exactly. <laughs> an and enormous cast for a show. Just, or half of <laughs> For, for, for a show that was only on, like, uh, a very few number of episodes. All the way from March to April. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is Ron, what that is you, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, let's see. We had... Uh, so Who we, was on AKA Pablo? Paul Rodriguez. Oh, Paul Rodriguez. Okay, that yes. was his vehicle. Yep. N not much of a vehicle. It didn't take him to No, it had a flat. Well, it, it, it was enough to just get his face on the camera, and now you can't get it yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> there now. I know it's special. Yeah, he's like a comedy channel uh, standard filler guy yeah. there now. Then we had this very strange show that, uh, that Norman Lear didn't actually develop, but he, that he took, uh, tried to syndicate called The Baxters. Yeah. And this was a very mm -hmm. strange show. The idea was half of it was a sitcom, but it was some sort of relevant, all-in-the-family kind of thing. And... Uh, what happened was the first half of the show is this sitcom-y, relevant deal, and the second half, local hosts, kind of like Phil Donahue types, I guess, like walk through the audience and get people's opinions about, and they have a debate about it. And they did this at this local station, and it was a big hit, and so Norman Lear bought it and tried to syndicate it around the country, and it flopped. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's because you just can't get local people. I mean, you, yeah. you can't get the same feel. Right. So... Yeah. Let's see, we had, um, let's see, we one mentioned hanging in, the there. Hot L Baltimore. That one, I loved it. Now, that was, was a great, great show. But, great show. But when, when you, when you look no. at that, when you look at that, though, you got to say, what chance did that really have of making it in 1975? Great show, though. It was a great show, but there great was no show. chance for it making it on broadcast television as, in 1975. As, 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 as our Granny Bean said, it was an older lady that lived next door, she watched the show, and you would think someone of her age would say, oh, trash, garbage. Yes. No, she loved it. She said, you know, it's one show she could turn on, and everyone was friends, and no one was fighting, well, it was, and no one was trying to hurt each other. It was, it was very much like, it, it was kind of like a Barney Miller kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Really, very, very like similar. Very much Wacky, like you know, these, these, the story kind of comes in, you know, just like, just like there. You know, a run-down like, kind of hotel. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, found one of my most favorite actresses on there, Conchata Farrell, mm -hmm. who you see on lots of things now. And... Um, and the other fellow, whoever played Bill, he was in a lot of things. You see him a lot. Tall fella, thin. His name's Cromwell. Okay, yeah. him. Well, Richard Masur also. And yes. Yeah. Mazur, I guess is Mazur, his name. Mazur, yeah. And, Al uh, Freeman Jr. Oh, was I, was, I was sad when that show went off because I really, that was my Friday night. Yeah, that was a good babysitting <laughs> job. Watch that show. Put the kids to bed and watch it. It was great. Well, let's see. I had two more shows here. I just wanted to make a real quick thing before we were about to be thrown off, thrown off for this, the end of the show. Nancy Walker show, which stuns me that Norman Lear had anything to do with that. As oh. as this, it was it was just a bad show. We'll just leave it at that. And a year at the top, which was about two aspiring rock musicians who the devil was trying to get them to to sign this contract so they'd be famous. And it was. The two rock musicians were Greg Evigan, who went on to BJ. My Two Dads, <laughs> and <laughs> Paul Schaefer. <laughs> so it was. No, I remember. But, so you can so you can certainly see that Norman Lear certainly went from from really uh, from great stuff to really bad stuff. So it shows that anybody can do really bad stuff. Everybody, oh, no, go get out! Go get out! Go get out! We gotta get out of here. Good night, everybody. We we'll out. Talk next much. time. Whatever. We talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get up real fast. <laughs> okay, okay, bye. <laughs>